Hello and welcome back to the channel for today's video, which is about this magnificent 1959 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud. Now this model can trace its origins back to the early post-war Bentley Mark VI. Following the Second World War, when Rolls-Royce were about to reintroduce passenger car production, a decision was taken that, at a time of austerity in post-war Britain, it probably wasn't the thing to be seen driving around in a new Rolls-Royce. So most of the early post-war products, unless they were for heads of state, they tended to be badged as Bentleys. This was Rolls-Royce's first new product after the war, and it was actually their first ever in-house produced complete vehicle, what they called the standard steel Mark VI. It had a four and a quarter litre, six cylinder engine and a four speed manual gearbox with synchro on second, third and fourth gearbox on the right. So by 1950, the Mark VI Bentley was available as a badge engineered Rolls-Royce motor car, principally for export. Essentially, the Rolls-Royce was a detuned sort of badge engineered Bentley with just a single carburetor, slightly less performance, but you know, we were back with the, with the beautiful Rolls-Royce uh, imposing grille that uh, had become so famous. That model later got an enlarged engine, enlarged to four and a half litre, and then in the early 1950s, you saw the introduction of the R-Type Bentley, which was essentially the same basic Mark VI design, but with a longer boot. The automatic gearbox became an option. That model ran right through until the end of 1954 as the R-Type and as the Rolls-Royce Silver Dawn. Now this car, which was introduced in April 1955, the Silver Cloud, was a larger car again than the R-Type had been. Still the same basic design of engine, but now enlarged to almost five litre. All of them were produced with automatic transmission and later, when this car was introduced, power steering was an option. So this has, if you like, the best options that you, you would have for the Series 1 car, which was power-assisted steering and a high-compression engine. Throughout the 1950s, Rolls-Royce continued to supply chassis to independent coach builders, people like Freestone and Webb and James Young and others, who would then build a bespoke body on them and when you look at pictures of the different designs from the independence during the 1950s you, you get some styling clues and, and you realise why ultimately Rolls-Royce adapted the design that they did for their in-house car which is this, the Silver Cloud 1. One of the things that is particularly special about this example, probably more so than any other one of these we've ever owned, is the level of originality. I mean it has 51,000 miles from new. The seats are the same seats that it left the factory with back in 1959. Original upholstery, original carpets, headlining. It, it's just as they should be. There's nothing smells quite like the, uh, the interior of one of these. And of course, that's something I can't uh, reproduce in a video. But this is an example, I would say, which surpasses all the other ones that, I've ever, that we've ever owned. the Rolls-Royce uh, adage, the best car in the world. It really did apply in, in those days. There was nothing you could buy that was more comfortable, that was more refined, and probably that was more reliable than one of these. Things were duplicated, two sets of points, two fuel pumps, spare coil. They did everything they could to make sure that if you bought one of the, uh, these cars, you wouldn't have a breakdown. As I'm looking on the dashboard here, I'm looking at the oil pressure in the car, which is absolutely bang in the middle of the, of the white arc that it should be in. Um, everything is working on the car. It, it works and performs exactly as it should. This model has a little switch on the, uh, just in front of the steering wheel here, which adjusts the rear suspension damping. So if you had, let's say, for example, a, a full car with four people in it, you would be able to stiffen up the suspension if you were going on an undulating road uh, or indeed if you wanted to drive it a little bit more briskly but the whole car lends itself to a relaxed cruising type of uh, driving style you don't want to rush anywhere in a Rolls-Royce motor car of this type so what about the driving experience well 
This is very much an owner-driver car. Many Rolls Royces had uh, bodies built as limousines with glass divisions, very much for the comfort of the passengers. But this was an owner-driver car. You have plenty of space. You've got this wonderful upright driving position where you where you have a, a, a great view on all sides. And there's something special, something that's hard to describe really, the feeling that you get from driving one of these cars, looking down that long bonnet at the spirit of ecstasy. The spirit of ecstasy, of course, the mascot is a work of art, but the car's a work of art. It's almost a triumph of style over function. There's nothing says elegance and status more than a Rolls-Royce motor car. So what about this specific car then? Well, there is a great description of it on our website and below this video. This car has only 51,600 miles from new. It's got a good maintenance history, but the, the striking feature of it is the level of originality. In every way, this looks like a car that is much younger. The quality of the woodwork, the original rugs, the original carpets, the soft original leather, the headlining, everything has that mark of originality about it. If you have something original like this, you are having the same experience that a, a much earlier owner would have had. And the best way I can describe it is that if you bought this as a second-hand car from a Rolls-Royce dealer, let's say 1963 or 1964, by which time many examples would have had the sort of mileage this car now has, that would be the experience you'd get. And that level of originality is something, well, you can't buy.